<laughs> How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Woo! What if I told you the Sonic co-creator got arrested for insider trading? You might be like, whoa! Goat and Moody, you're redlining this video right now, right hard! Now, of course, to understand, uh, what if I told you they even admitted to insider trading? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start off by ripping the bandit off and saying that probably one of the worst things that has happened to human culture was Sonic the Hedgehog, okay? Something about this blue hedgehog has ruined the brain cells of civilized society. Now, look, I, Sonic the Hedgehog has been important on my channel. I played a few games, covered the creepypastas. You know, I played Sonic.exe, you know, da -da 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 -da, Tails chasing you and all that good stuff. But to understand, Sonic the Hedgehog has created some of the most insane uh, human beings on the planet. You know, Christine Weston Chandler, Chris Chan. You know, the, uh, the, I'm not going to get into the story of it because holy crap, that's a policy guideline strike waiting to happen. But of course, Sonic the Hedgehog really did a number on that. You also have individuals who created Sonic marriage forums. Yes, I'm not joking with you. There were forums on the internet where they were talking about Eggman's cum and actually issuing marriage licenses over Sonic characters and OCs. You want to get married to Amy Rose? Well, there's a place to get that officiated, okay? Of course it is. It's the goddamn internet. <laughs> Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, Sonic the Hedgehog, I don't have to explain it to you, okay? It's a side-scroller video game. You run really fast. You, you, you figure out the levels, and, you, and, and it is what it is, okay? It's like, doo 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 So, of course, you've got two people behind Sonic the Hedgehog. You've got Naoto Oshimiya, who is the artist, and then you got Yuji Naka, who is the actual programmer, and, of course, one of the co-creators. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, to understand, Sonic the Hedgehog might have been one project, but the story gets even deeper. Now, Yuji Naka, who is, you know, in his 50s, is still actually a game developer. And to understand, one of the last games that he's worked on is Balan's Wonderland, okay? Now, Balan's Wonderland is an interesting story over here. This is, without a doubt, one of the shittiest games ever fucking made, okay? You know, there are a lot of bad games. Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, Shenmue, okay? You've got games like Left Alive. But Balan's Wonderland takes the cake because there's actually nothing good about it. For this video, and, and for, the, for the sake of journalistic research, I did in fact subject myself to human torture, and I played through some of Balan's Wonderland, all right? And to really describe to you the gameplay that you're seeing, if it pains you to watch this, it actually plays a hundred times worse in your hand, all right? You know, I literally feel disgusted having played this video game. It is effectively a, 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 an, a an action platformer video game, okay? It is what it is. It's a platforming video game that feels genuinely old, all right? It is it is from a different era of video gaming. And it, and it shows, it plays just like that. Now, I understand Balan's Wonderland came out incredibly buggy and it reviewed incredibly poorly. We're talking the Switch version of the game, which I assume most people bought, 36 on Metacritic, uh, and of course, 4.5 on a user score. It is not a loved game. The critics don't like it, and the users don't like it. This is literally the one video game that parents buy. Like, if you just look at the cover art for this, parents are going to buy this game just because it looks friendly for the kid. It's rated E10+. I would never let dead people play this game if they could potentially do it, because that would be a crime against humanity. Now, Yuji Naka started working with Square Enix for a little bit in creating this uh, travesty to mankind. And of course, in this situation, you know, he actually did shortly quit before the game actually came out. So, of course, you can see that Yuji Naka confirmed his departure from Square Enix. I retired from Square Enix at the end of April 2021 because I would like to contact the media and users. I can't talk about the reason now, but I hope I can talk about it when the time comes. As for future activities, I'm 55 years old, so I may retire. So, of course, Yuji Naka left Square Enix towards the end of April, which, uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, it was weird. Uh, who had actually quit from the company at the time? Was he fired by Square Enix? Did he quit of his own volition? Now, of course, he didn't just quit Square Enix, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he, in fact, decided to sue the parent company. So, of course, what had happened over here, there was two reasons he had actually quit. One of them was actually because a YouTuber was apparently quote-unquote hired to perform and release like sheet music for the actual video game instead of using the original video game score, which I guess Yuji Naka considered to be a little bit insulting. 
Then, of course, there was also tensions between him and a co-developer, Arzest, which basically had uh, actually left a lot of bugs in the game and released it in an unfinished state, which basically made it look really bad on release, which is why it got critically panned. It was considered a very buggy game when it released. And you gotta understand, there was some genuine hype too. You know, this is like a reunion of like Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima, who I talked about earlier, who basically was one of the current heads of that RSS Corporation. And of course, being the fact that their reunion created one of the most commercial, like the largest commercial failures of 2021, actually, you know, bred some bad blood between these two guys, okay? So it was just, it was a bad situation all around. Balan's Wonderland was not a good situation. So of course it doesn't end over there. Like any bad breakup, there's a whole lot of statements to be made. And of course, Yuji Naka releases a few statements that we're gonna read through. I was removed as the director of Balan Wonderland about half a year before release, so I filed a lawsuit against Square Enix. Now that the proceedings are over and I'm no longer bound by the company rules, I'd like to speak out. As far as I understand, the actual uh, lawsuit is done and over with. And I think it's wrong of Square Enix not to value games and game fans. According to court documents, I was removed as Balan Wonderland for two reasons. It was done by the producer, head of marketing, head of sound, managing director, and HR. First, when a YouTuber's arranged piano performance of a game music was released in the promotion instead of the original game track, Turning the composer into a ghostwriter, I insisted that the original track be released and this caused trouble. Then, of course, according to court documents, Naoto Oshima told producer Fujimoto that the relationship with Arzus was ruined due to comments I made wanting to improve the game in the face of Arzus submitting a final build of the game without ever actually fixing bugs. In an email from Oshima to Fujimoto, he wrote, I just told the staff about the demo delay. When I told them this was production Fujimoto's decision, let's do our best for him. The staff's been down lately, but their spirits have been revived. Thank you very much. All of us on the staff will work hard. So the schedule wasn't up to me, but the producer, yet the schedule being tight was the producer's doing, something was off. We were releasing an original game but only putting out an arranged track was definitely wrong. I believe the game's music that everyone can hum are the original tracks. You see, you start to see why the Sonic community is the way that it is. <laughs> because the fucking developers are unhinged nut bars too. So of course, nobody was happy with how Balan Wonderland turned out. Square Enix wasn't happy because they lost a crap ton of money. Uh, neither developer was happy, Yuji Naka was pissed, and of course, then it later came out that Yuji Naka, while apparently allegedly working at Square Enix, was actually committing insider trading fraud. Now, insider trading, just as a quick explanation to people who are watching, is the activity of having insider knowledge, obviously regarding businesses, and using that knowledge to publicly trade stocks where you know your decision will have an advantage. So you're trading with information that's not publicly available, and that is highly illegal no matter where you go in the world. You can imagine the ethical ramifications of doing this. I think it's like the statistic of somewhere like 30 to 50 people yearly get caught for insider trading, and the conviction rate is horribly low on it. But of course, let's go look into what happened with Yuji Naka, okay? Now, of course, like all good stories and creators, it all comes tumbling down with the magical world of insider trading. Now, of course, when it came to the first case of insider trading, Yuji Naka was actually arrested. Uh, two former you know, Square Enix employees in this case were arrested as part of an insider trading investigation at Square Enix. So what had happened was Yuji Naka was basically prime suspect for insider trading regarding a Dragon Quest game. Now, Dragon Quest is a massive franchise in Japan. And of course, in Japan, like the rest of the world, mobile gaming is definitely a big market to be in. So what had happened at the time was uh, in Tokyo, they ran an arrest because allegedly at the time, it seems Yuji Naka had purchased $336,000 worth of stock in a company known as Aiming. But of course, it wasn't the only time Yuji Naka was hitting up those uh, iron cells. He eventually got rearrested over another case of insider trading. Now, you might know of a game known as Final Fantasy VII. Uh, you know, it's a small little RPG on the PS1. You might have played FF7 Remake. 
But did you play FF7 The First Soldier Battle Royale for the mobile devices? If your answer is, yeah, you're a goddamn liar, because nobody played that game, and there's further evidence of that, being that it got shut down a month ago, because nobody touched it. Now, I played it, and I can tell you exactly why it was shut down. It was a box standard Battle Royale that uh, just didn't have anything unique to it. But of course, what was really important was Yuji Naka also knew about this game's announcement. And what did he do in this case, allegedly? Well, he decided to invest into the company A-Team developing the game. And the, inv the actual uh, investment was somewhere around the tune of $834,000, okay? So he's not even, like, allegedly not even trying to hide it anymore, okay? It's insanity. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because uh, Yuji Naka has no idea how to commit actual investor fraud, uh, he was rearrested. And recently, of course, during an actual trial that's ongoing, Yuji Naka has now apparently has uh, responded that, yes, he was actually committing insider trading. The co-creator of Sonic the Hedgehog said that there was no doubt that I knew the facts about the game before it was made public and bought the stock, straight up admitting to committing actual financial fraud. Yeah, the Sonic community is literally led by a father that is brain dead and batshit insane. Now, one would question, why would Yuji Naka actually commit insider trading fraud, allegedly, for amounts this goddamn small in the first place? Now, of course, the amounts were small, but the actual trading was so obvious. Imagine taking such an L at Square Enix. Like, I could only imagine being a Square Enix executive, hiring this game like auteur, this visionary, creating a video game that underperformed so heavily that the guy had to quit, the guy was resigned, then sues you, and then you find out later that he was actually using internal press releases in your company to actually manipulate the goddamn stock market. Now, of course, insider trading fraud, unfortunately, in Japan, all right, can lead to, I believe, up to five years. Administrative penalties and criminal penalties may be imposed to insider trading cases, maybe, of course, Obviously, this is Japan, so it depends on how far the courts want to take it. Given that it's gotten such a bad amount of press, maybe they want to actually make an example out of it. But of course, the maximum penalty is penal servitude of up to five years, so five years of prison, and a criminal fine of up to five million Japanese yen. So of course, ladies and gentlemen, financial penalties for trading on insider information have historically been relatively modest and there have only been a few criminal cases brought. So again, because it's white collar crime, who knows how seriously it's taken. But I think the entire story is just funny based on Yuji Naka getting arrested. There's been a fair amount of memes that have come out of this too. Like for instance, has he escaped from prison? Some people have used this alleged deep web doctored footage in order to achieve it. You know, Sonic the Hedgehog just flying down. I think it's kind of a hilarious meme. But at the end of the day, it's a wild story to see one of the creators of the most popular franchises of video games having an absolute goddamn mental breakdown in the last six months and it all ending with a trial involving insider information at Square Enix, one of Japan's largest gaming companies. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a wild world we live in. I wish I could make this stuff up, but reality is often far wilder than fiction. And if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I... Help. <laughs> Out.